we do have time for a couple of questions. So if anyone has a question, please, um, we'll get a mic over to you. Yes. It's so inspirational and, and you know, Juan Anita, you are amazing. You're absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for everything that you do. <laughs> I, I actually want to cry. Um, okay, so I want to focus. I want to ask two things, actually, if I may. The first thing is, uh, oh, okay. So my name is Sumitra. I'm the executive director of Women's Aid Organization uh, and also a beneficiary of uh, Yayasan San Dabi. Um, yeah, they've been supporting us for 40 years, actually, since we started. So, um, uh, sorry, 30 years, 30 years. <laughs> Okay, so two things. So number one is about culture. So everything that you all have mentioned has been about attitudes, public attitudes, our own attitudes towards our own mental health, um, you know, employers' attitudes towards uh, the mental health of their workers, community, society, family attitudes. Um, we need, I feel that we need to do more, all of us who are in the space of social change, we need to do more to shift Malaysian culture towards a more inclusive space where there's acceptance of equality and non-discrimination, etc. So we need to see great emphasis on gender equality. You know, uh, uh, colleagues that I know in MAC need to see a shift in culture and acceptance of you know people living with HIV AIDS, etc. We need to see a, a shift in culture where there's more inclusivity for people with disabilities, people with mental health. I feel that we need to all come together to work on a common platform of cultural change. Um, and, and I just would be really interested to hear your thoughts on that. And then my second thing that I want to ask is for Puan Anita, and that is uh, the mental health of frontliners and caregivers. The people who are volunteering have mental health needs. My staff have mental health needs. Um, uh, what we have been trying to do as employers is trying to push insurance companies to provide us workplace insurance or, uh, uh, that will cover counseling, therapy, etc. And it's been like, for me, it's been you know, a five-year battle with various insurance companies. And I feel that's the other thing that's important, that we should get insurers to provide medical coverage for mental health, not just hospitalization, but therapy, psychiatry, and psychiatric drugs. So just your thoughts on that. Thank you very much, Sumitra, for the question. <clears throat> now, this has been really an uphill battle, right? And a lot of a lot of times people ask, Juanita, how come insurance companies overseas do cover mental health and why not here? And again, you know, Sumitra and Everett, this comes back to stigma. This comes back to the negative perception because you see, you can't benchmark recovery of a mental health condition how you would benchmark a physical condition. And I think if insurance companies still come from that perspective, then it's going to be very difficult because how do you measure that, right? Um, and what I've seen progressing in Malaysia really is, one, there are several insurance companies today that do cover mental health, however, as a medical writer. So the moment you already live with a mental health condition, then it's a, an exclusion, right? So it's 100% discrimination, of course. So we're still working on, on that part. But they do, some insurance companies do cover, like you said, hospitalization, medication, therapy, and also um, mental health assessment. We do see that. And I do feel that we need the, the voices from the private sector to come in to give that, that push. And again, political will. And like what a uh, senator is saying, we need the voices to be louder on the ground. You know, I always invite people from above, you know, the, the government, the ministry, to come to the ground and see what the reality is today. Because really, guys, what we're seeing today is the tip of the iceberg. A lot of people, Sumitra, have this perception that now we're, the, we're in this endemic phase, somewhat a resolve. People are worse off today. Okay? People have lost jobs during the pandemic, right? People have lost loved ones during the pandemic. People were living in isolation during the pandemic. The normal people want more people with disabilities, so it has exacerbated the mental struggles of many. 
and we see suicide rates have rocketing, right? Um, contributing factors increased a lot, and this is not something new. We've seen it, seen this, this situation that we are in today, we have seen this throughout human history, during the pandemic, during epidemics, during war, during famine, and the irony of the whole thing today, we are still unprepared. So my, what I would like to say is, I want all of us to remember the lessons that the pandemic thought, taught us so that we are able to move more aggressively and be more prepared today because we do not want a health system that is overburdened and overstretched like what we saw during COVID and especially the mental health system as well, right? So we need to, to move more aggressively. And again, the numbers are what we need, Sumitra, so that we can make and reflect that change in behavior and spur actions at all levels. Then only that transformative change that we all want will happen. Yep. Thank you. Well said, Paralisa. Thank you so much, Sumitra. We can we have time for one more question. Um, I, I think the center has something to say.